Uh, my name is Chell Salvanes and I'm a professor of economics uh, and also deputy director of a um, center, FAIR, Center of Excellence in Norway, called FAIR, at the Norwegian School of Economics. Uh, so my main interest uh, is uh, trying to understand better why some people do well in life and some people uh, don't do so well. And also, interestingly, this, the, the strong persistence uh, across generations and, you know, performing well or not performing well, let's say, in the, in the labor market. Um, so I have been working uh, on this for a while. Um, and I think I will talk about two projects that we have that I'm quite excited about that I think also will give us more um, knowledge about what's going on. So uh, one of the projects is actually within the, the center uh, called FAIR together with colleagues. It's a group of uh, labor economists together with uh, behavioral economists sort of combining registered data and uh, experimental data and survey data to, to try to understand better inequality. So what we're going to do is that we are collect, uh, collect information about uh, uh, for both parents and children uh, in the age group of, you know, from birth until five, six, uh, when there's uh, f five, six years of age, and also uh, for teenagers and also for the middle group. Uh, so we're trying to, we're going to follow three cohorts, different cohorts, age cohorts. Uh, so we will collect information both uh, uh, for the parents, you know, um, uh, investments uh, in kids in terms of time, uh, you know, what they're doing, are they reading, the way they're reading, and playing, etc. And also uh, measurement uh, of the kids, you know, socio-emotional skills, but also cognitive skills, let's say, language and, uh, and other things. And then we're going to follow these kids uh, through uh, registers, but also through um, uh, follow-up studies. Uh, until school age. And for the middle uh, age kids, we are going to start in uh, first grade and follow them until actually for eight years. And for the early teenage kids, we are co going to follow them until they are about 20, you know, when they have decided to go to college or not, or into the labor market. So what we are particularly interested in is the socio-economic difference. We know that, for, for instance, from Prof Professor Heckman's work, that differences start early on, you know, before school start. And we're trying to understand uh, and, uh, and that there is a strong socioeconomic gradient. And what we want to understand is why is that? What are they doing differently? Parenting style is a, you know, concept that people are using, you know, that uh, parents are doing things differently. Uh, what we are trying to do is to understand also why they are doing this differently. So. Is it that they are less patient uh, with the kids? Do they have less difference? Is there a difference in expectations? For instance, that, you know, my kids won't do well anyway, so, you know, it's maybe not worthwhile to do this. Um, things like that. And how that affects the, the, the kids in terms of their uh, performance before school, but also their school performance. So we think this is uh, innovative project since we are combining um, uh, registered data, which we have a lot of experience with, and also combining experimental data and survey data, all of this together. Uh, and the group is sort of, a, as I said, a combination of these two, have these two ex uh, expertise, you know, within the whole uh, research group. Uh, so I think this can be quite uh, excited. We have some pilots already. Um, and it's possible to do this, uh, and it gives actually quite exciting uh, information in terms of, let's say, time preferences. Is it so that, you know, is there a socioeconomic gradient in, in time preferences? Uh, that could also turn out to be important for development of the kids. So that is one project, and one important project for us. Another way to understand inequality is to try to follow the more historical patterns over time. So Norway, um, along with the other Scandinavian countries, developed the welfare state sort of from the mid-30s onwards. Um, I mean, it was not necessarily a decision that, you know, tomorrow we will start the welfare state. You know, it was small pieces. Uh, and then, of course, it turned out, you know, maybe after the war, 
to be more cohesive and you know bigger bigger project. Uh, so what we are doing is that we are collecting information about all of the small changes that took place in the um, mainly in the 30s, and also bigger projects that started uh, welfare projects that started when the labor market, uh, a labor party in Norway came to power in the mid 30s, um, and this is a. Uh, interesting feature of using registered data going way back as we have in Norway we can actually follow uh, cohorts born in the mid-20s onwards and their kids and their kids again so we can follow two three four generations uh, and we can also look at long-term outcomes if something happened in uh, early childhood uh, we can see how that uh, you know uh, affects performance in the labor market in terms of education and in terms of health later on and for their kids and for their kids again so so that is what we are doing we are combining registered data with um, natural experiments sort of policy changes that took place uh, and it doesn't have to be national policies it could be smaller policies it could be health policies it could be can be uh, education policies and it could be more economic policies and, and see how this plays out um, uh, uh, in later life. So I think these two perspectives, you know, the long-term big changes in the, in a way, the real world, what's going on, what has been going on and why did some policies work and why did some policies not work and why did uh, uh, why do the Scandinavian countries have this um, um, high mobility from generation to the next in terms of income, uh, but hi have this high persistence when it comes to education? Uh, to try to understand that better, I think it's to use the historical per uh, perspective is one way to do it. The other way is, of course, uh, to try to learn from the more detailed, in, deal, uh, in, in detail, uh, research we're going to do in the Childhood Gap project, where we actually, in detail, try to understand, you know, how our parents from different socioeconomic strata uh, bringing up their kids, you know, how are they thinking, how patient are they, you know, what are their expectations. So, uh, the idea is to sort of, to bring together these two different perspectives. So that is sort of the big, two big projects um, uh, we are undertaking, you know, starting from now basically and, and the years to come.